Hello everybody, it's me, Undead Viking, coming to you from my game room once again with another one of my board game video reviews. Uh, the game I am reviewing today, as you probably well know, uh, is Kings of Air and Steam. Uh, as you can probably tell, this is not a uh, professionally uh, produced uh, game board. Uh, this is a game that, if you notice, it even says right there, it says it's a 2012 release. This is a game that's Again, uh, like my preceding review and other reviews I've done, uh, this is a game that's in Kickstarter, uh, meaning that this is a game that uh, is garnering uh, people to uh, pay up front for an item that will come out eventually. Um, this particular game uh, has met its goal, so it's going to be published one way or the other by Tasty Minstrel Games, which is cool. So if you're after watching this video and you want to uh, pony up some cash, because uh, there is a little bit of a window left for it, um, you know, you you are going to get the game when it comes out. But there's a lot of different uh, bonus levels that that this uh, particular game can get to that, that are going to allow uh, the people that did get on the Kickstarter uh, to get all those cool little uh, bonus pieces and added, uh, you know, uh, stuff that gets added to the game. Which, of course, you know, who doesn't like cool stuff, you know, added to, uh, you know, the base game? You know, like expansions and special pieces and so on and so forth. So, uh, hopefully, after watching this review, you will uh, decide uh, whether or not this is something you're interested in. And then you will go ahead and uh, you will uh, purchase this game on their Kickstarter program. Now, uh, Kings of and Steam is uh, at its heart it's kind of an economics game it's got some logistics it's got some uh, you know pick up and deliver kind of thing going on um, uh, what it is uh, is is technically sort of as you probably guess by the name a train game now uh, there's lots of different kinds of train games but um, people refer to that as, as a genre of games. And, and that's cool, I mean, because, you know, if you're, if you're going to base a game on trains, you know, um, you, know it, you don't have to all be the same, obviously. Um, I, I, I do find the, the, the all-encompassing uh, subject of, of a train game to uh, be very polarizing in a certain way. Uh, there are many, many, many people that... Um, are avid uh, train game lovers, and uh, and I'm, I'm speaking of um, the, the the classics. And when at least when I think train game, I don't think Ticket to Ride. Uh, I think Age of Steam or or Railroad Tycoon or Railways of the World or even some of the uh, 18xx titles. You know, because they're they're about running a a a, 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 a your train company, you know, and and your you know that that railroad, and and you're you know making money. They're almost always like seemingly economic. You know, I'm like ticket drive, which really isn't. But the and they're people seem to either like really like them or not care for them. And it, it, it's and I don't know why that is. I mean, and the thing is, it's weird that I'm saying that because I kind of fall in the middle. You know, I I enjoy them. Um, I don't go out of my way to play them all the time, but um, like a game like Poseidon, which you know technically is an 18xx game, very light game. I love that game. I played that with a couple of my friends constantly, uh, and you can check out that review if you want to. Go ahead. But um, this this particular game, uh, you know, I would say it's not a real real heavy uh, train game. It, it kind of falls in the middle. Um, it doesn't have a lot of luck. Uh, it um, doesn't have a, a ton of play interaction, but there is some, you know. So uh, you know that might not um, appeal. Both those things uh, might not appeal to everybody. You know, there's there's definitely uh, the, the people that that do like a little chaos in their games, and and there are definitely people that you know really really favor lots of play interaction. You know, so they can uh, mess with each other and things like that. And uh, so, but you know. Lots of different games out there. Lots of different people like lots of different things. And um, I played this now with my friends many times. Uh, we very much in enjoy the game. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, exactly uh, how the game works and uh, you know the mechanics of it and, and how uh, you play. And when I do show you the game board and everything like that, you know, um, it is a. It's kind of one of the. Cool, I'm jumping ahead here, but it's a modular board. I mean, you actually like create the board out of these pieces, and so it can be different each time you play, which is cool. Who doesn't like that? But um, what I'm going to be showing you 
uh, this. Um, keep in mind that obviously these will not be the final uh, components of the game when it does uh, come out. So let's just go right into the gameplay. I'll show you how that goes and and then after that I'll tell you exactly why I really like the game and uh, hopefully I can convince you to uh, uh, go out and uh, purchase the game yourself. So, all right, without further ado, uh, let's do that. All right, this is the game board for Kings of Aaron's team. Uh, this is created before the game by the players, and it is created randomly. So um, the way the tiles are situated and where they are is different each time you play the game, which is cool. Uh, you'll notice that on the bottom of this particular tile, uh, you will see it says C2+, meaning that you would use this particular tile in, pretty much in every game that you play of this, because it's used with two or more players. However, some of the tiles, um, like this one have a three on them so you'd only use it if you have three or more players and this tile has a five so you'd only use that with the full five people now then the game board itself uh, has several different things going on um, these spots here are cities um, and the color of the city determines the type of good they want so this is a yellow city and it's demanding yellow goods and this is a red city demanding red goods and so on and so forth the black lines are railways uh, that your trains will use to deliver the goods to those cities. And these uh, little factories are just that, factories, and they create the goods each turn. Okay, before the game starts, uh, you will place uh, this little, little turn marker, and this is like the future market and the prices of each market. Um, you'll place that for round one, and you'll place one cube of each color on here. And you'll place those uh, there on the four. Now, of course, I'm going to drop these probably. But that's saying that right now, these particular goods are worth four bucks if you deliver them. You know, so, and you obviously you can see the increase. And they never go down. So, I mean, so they're only going to get more valuable as the game progresses. Now, how do they get more valuable? Well, one of the few random things in the game, uh, besides the creation of the game board and also the uh, turn order, uh, I, I, the very first game because you're the very first turn because you're, you're randomly select the first player, you have these tiles. And these tiles have a color on them, like there's you know, red and pink and blue. And you will draw, you'll like put these in a cup or shuffle them up, and you'll draw three of these randomly. And, you know, these will be... Oops, sorry, uh, the the demand. I should sh shake these up a little bit. And these will be like the the, the demand or whatever for uh, this turn. Like they'll increase the demand. So in this case, uh, I got a pink and an orange and a yellow. And so you place those three tiles on the top like that. And then you'll take those particular goods, the yellow and you increase those to five dollars and these will change uh with each turn you'll you'll uh you know put these tiles aside you'll draw three more and then you can see how those will slowly increase and they'll become more valuable something important that happened during the game is you'll wonder oh should i deliver these goods this turn or should i wait till next turn and deliver them because they might be worth more money than later kind of a neat little part of the game and and also those tiles serve a second purpose after they're used, they're they're turned, they're, they're they're tossed to the side, and then as demand is met on the cities out here, you'll notice there's like five spots on those, and these have three. Um, after they've had five goods delivered to the city, you'll randomly select one of the tiles that's been used, and you'll place that over the city like that, and now they have new demand, but only three cubes. And once demand it for this has been satisfied, you turn that over on the city, meaning that the city basically no longer accepts goods. All right, so now you know how the market works, and now you know how those tiles work as far as with the different uh, demands in the cities and so on and so forth. So now, how do you actually play the game? Well, each person uh, gets one of these boards, and uh, you'll see you know, it has a nice thing with the game turn and everything like that. And you'll notice over here, however, there is the airship hold. This is the hold on your airship. And carrying the goods that's going to be delivering those to depots, which then deliver them. The railways then take the depots and deliver them to the cities. Uh, you'll also notice that there's four spots down here. 
for uh, cards. These are the movement cards you use. To start out the game, each person will take these cubes and they'll place them right here and here. Meaning that this is, uh, they're at level one bo both for their train and their zeppelin. As the game progresses, you'll spend money to improve your zeppelin and improve your train. Um, by improving your train, what it does is basically that allows you to travel over more railways, not spots. So like if you had a two, you could travel two railways. So like this is a railway and that's a railway and you could deliver two spots like that. And however, with the Zeppelin, you'll notice that this number is the number of goods they can hold in its hold when it delivers them. And you'll see these diamonds up on top. Now you might be saying, what's the diamonds? Okay, well the diamonds coincide with these, the movement cards that you have. You have these in your hand, and, and before, the, before your turn starts, what you'll do is you will uh, try to determine where you want your airship to move during the four movement phases of each turn. And you'll notice that here's, there's like four spots, and two spots, and so on and so forth. Now, you'll also notice that there are diamonds up in the top here. And the diamonds, once again, coincide with this up here. You can never play in the four movement phases more diamonds up here than you have on the game board. So at the very beginning you don't have any, so you can't play any of the cards that have diamonds unless you actually spend an action to improve your airship. Now that's actually kind of one of the clever things. You can actually place these cards, because you place four immediately upside down. And you might place a card that has more diamonds than you have available, but you know during the, the course of the turn you're going to improve your airship and you are going to be able to eventually use it, you know, you're going to upgrade it before that card's shown. But regardless, you know, you, you, you place this card, whatever card you decide to place down, like, you know, this one, there's like a, like this movement of, of three, and you will place that card down and then when you turn the card over, you'll get to move your airship. Now, it says it like a straight line here, but it doesn't have to go straight. Airships can turn, you know, they have rudders and what have you. Now, this is one of the cool things about the game. What determines who gets to move first and collect whatever first and go wherever first is determined by the letter on the card. So, if somebody turns over a card with an A on it, which I don't, you know, when this one goes zero, obviously, but maybe they just want to do their action first, They'll, like, they'll go before somebody who places a C. So like this person A will do it before that. So the, the first player isn't always going to be the same person each and every turn. It's going to be determined by which card they play. Very, very cool part of the game and actually probably like the most important part of the game as far as the whole uh, trying to get your stuff done before the other players do. And very, it adds to the whole logistic nature of this game. So at the beginning of the game, uh, after you determine the first player, in counterclockwise fashion from the first player, people get to place these. They're called their depots. And they get to place them on a railway somewhere. Now, you know, these, I'm just kind of throwing these down right now. It, uh, you know, I'm probably not doing optimal moves at this point for any of the players. But after you place those, you also place your airship which are, you know, these, and obviously these are these little paper tokens, they work just fine, but I think they actually are going to try to have, like, cool plastic airships for each person. But once, you know, you have these uh, these railways placed, and at the beginning of the game, you can't have more than one uh, railway, uh, one depot per railway, but later on you can add more, because you're going to be paying money to build them. You place your airship on top of that. So, you will begin your turn, so like, let's say, this particular person, like here, they uh, they built th their depot there, and they decided to move to here, and you can pick up or drop off goods at the beginning or the end of each time your airship moves. So they go here, and they'll pick up that cube, you know, they'll go take, they'll place this in their airship hold right here. Uh, later on in the turn, you know, they will then you know, move that airship back over here to where their depot is, and then they will drop off that cube. And then it can sit there and it can wait. But uh, then eventually, if they have a railway that can move two spots, they can say, okay, now I'm going to deliver this cube to this red city here. And they'll place that on there. So once there's five cubes in there, you'll know it's full. 
And whatever the market price for red is at that point, they'll earn that money. And that is the basics of the game. Now there's more actions you can take uh, because after you do each one of your airship movements, you, know, you get to take an action. The action can be to improve your airship. It can be to improve your, your, uh, your, your railways or your trains. Um, it can be to build another depot. So let's say, you know, like Yellow wanted to build another depot. They could build another depot right there. Now, if you're to build a depot, it costs $4 to build it, the first person to build one on a railway. If you're the second person to build one, it's 7 And then if you're the third person, it's $10. So you can see it gets more and more expensive. Now, obviously, if you have more depots, those are what actually allow you to uh, have a train because in order to travel on any of the railways there has to be a depot there. It doesn't have to be yours but it has to be there. But you can only store your goods on your color of depot. Now if you use somebody else's depot to uh, send a train, so let's you know say blue here wanted to go to green here and he wanted to travel that way but he doesn't have a depot here so let's just actually give blue one here so he could so he can go this way and that way to travel but and I and I apologize I should have shown that on the last uh, move when I, you earn that money th there had to be a depot there as well but so he travels there but let's say he wants to get here well he can let's say like green was worth you know seven dollars so green was worth a ton he has a bunch of green cubes right here and he wants to deliver them but to use these people's depots because you have to if you're gonna go on that railway you have to give each one of these people one dollar per cube that you are delivering so, you know, it's one of those things where, oh, fine, I'm going to help you out a little bit, I'm going to give you money because money determines the winner, but it's worth it in the end because I'm going to earn a lot more than you. Uh, other than that, uh, you can, if after you've done your airship movement, you can adjust the movement of your airship by one space as an action, or if you just choose to do nothing, which happens more often than you think, um, you just earn three bucks for just passing and not taking an action. You do um, the four turns where you unveil those four cards. After that's done, uh, you collect everything uh, as far as, you know, you take all your cards back, put them in your hand. Uh, you have this card, you take those three uh, spots off, and then whatever color factories are here, those produce another good. So in this case, the red factories, the yellow factories, and the uh, purple factories will produce another goods. There's another good sitting on those factories. And then you just begin again. Begin the next turn. You uh, move over to there and you so on and go forth. There is one other thing I should mention that if you have a good sitting on one of your depots or sitting in your airship hold, you do have to pay a one dollar upkeep to basically hold on to that good. So yes, you can play a waiting game to wait until something's worth more money uh, later to deliver it, but at a certain point it might just be worth it for you just to deliver it now and cash in because it's costing you that dollar each turn to keep it and hold on to it. After all is said and done, after the, the full six turns ago, you determine whoever has the most money. You earn bonus money if you for your depots, ten dollars each for each depot you have out. So it's always a good idea to get your depots up because that can kind of determine the winner or the loser at the end of the game. Whoever has the most money wins the game. It's it's really cool. I mean, the game is you think, okay, gosh, it's about trains, it's about railways, and oh, also zeppelins and things like that. And you think it, you think it's more difficult, but actually the rules are very very simple and very very cool and easy to figure out. And you can teach this to somebody that, you know, has played board games before really, really quickly. But the thing is, it's one of those games that is um, simple but deep. And I really, really like this genre game. If you watch some of these videos, you know that that is a type of game that I really, really enjoy. I like the simple but deep uh, games that you can teach quickly, but they're a layer upon layer upon layer, that peeling of the onion, uh, the game that presents itself to you. And, and and as you play it more, you start to realize different strategies and different tactics, and it, it's just a heck of a lot of fun to play. But, okay, obviously I enjoy the game, but you know, let me just uh, move on to my conclusion, and then hopefully I can convince you to uh, go spend some money on this one and, and, and uh, uh, contribute to the Kickstarter. All right, here we go. All right, so um, there you go. That's how you play uh, Kings of Air and Steam. Now, 
Uh, I, pro I I didn't make it exhaustive. There's you know some stuff in there that I didn't touch on, but you should have a real um, good basis of, of how the game is played as far as uh, you know piloting your airship and setting up your routes with your train and and making your money and you know setting up those depots and and delivering those goods. And so it, you should know. Um, you know exactly how the game's played at least, or a very, very good feeling for it. So, um, I like it. I, I, I like the whole um, mental process of figuring out, you know, which cities are close enough, where am I going to put this depot down, you know, how am I going to optimize, you know, grabbing uh, those cubes and delivering them to my depot, and do I have to go through uh, another person's depot? Do I, is it going to be worth it for me to spend the of them that money uh, to get there? You know, and and it it and that's kind of you know it's 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 one of those things. I remember when I did uh, my review of Poseidon a little bit ago, and and don't when I'm going to be mentioning this, and it's an 18xx type game. You know, I, I don't want you to like get me get the feeling that I'm trying to say that this is an 18xx game because I mean I, I admittedly. My personal uh, knowledge of, of the 18x games is very, very small and tiny, so I'm not even going to step into that giant sandbox. And there's lots of fervent lovers of those games, so, um, and I don't want them to come in here and go, it isn't that, you know. So, um, but the thing is, is that, uh, you know, it's it's that part of it. I like it, you know. It's just like, okay, I'm going to make you know, $24 by doing this, but I'm going to be giving him, you know, $5 to do it. Okay, that's fine. You know, but no, this, I'm only going to make $8 for doing that, you know, so maybe it isn't worth it to give him the $5 for that. And, you know, I like those things. I like the fact that the, the different uh, speeds uh, determine the player order, so it's something you got to keep in your mind. It isn't just... Um, the standard, you know, just like, okay, move the first player marker around the table slowly. You know, it depends on what you're setting up, you know, which cards you're using to for, for your piloting. I like that. I, I, you know, kind of like outguessing your opponents, you know. A lot of times you're forced uh, into doing what you have to do. Uh, and so, like, you don't really have a lot of options when it comes time to set up those movements. But, you know, sometimes the window is open for that. Or, or you might actually be, you know, giving up... Uh, like an optimal move, just so you can get to go first on a particular turn. You know, it's things like that. You know, that, that really make the game shine for me. Um, yeah, I I really don't have a, a minus to it. I mean, other than the fact that I have to be in the right mood for the game. If if I want to play a game that's got a bunch of dice and a bunch of figures beating the hell out of each other, obviously I'm not going to get this game out. But if I want a game that's going to make me think and it's going to make me um, you know, be competitive with my friends and, you know, have that nice, like, you know, like feeling in my brain as I'm trying to figure out my turn kind of thing, you know, uh, you know, then this is a game that I, I, I highly enjoy. I'm really, I think it's cool that I have this prototype to play, but I'm really excited uh, to see, like, the, the, the final game board and the final pieces and everything like that and have a nice professionally published uh, version of this. Now, I mean, it stinks. I mean, I mean, obviously, I've got this copy to play, and 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 you won't, you know. So I, I'm trying to convince you to get the game, but um, trust me. I mean, if this is the type of game you like, uh, I I don't think you're going to be steer wrong. Um, you know, and I mean, I'm not going to make any sort of wild guess, you know, uh, as far as uh, 2012 and the games that are coming out or anything like that. But I mean. I mean, I could definitely see this game being in my top 10 next year when I do a, a top 10 video for 2012. You know, obviously, if 10 really, really awesome games that are better than this come out, you know, obviously it won't. But it is a very good game, and it's very fun, and, and I've been having a lot of fun with the version that I have. So, hopefully, um, you know, you can take that, you know, and, and make up your own mind. Um, you know, I guess uh, the only thing I, I wanted to just touch on real quick is the fact that I, I didn't know if they were kind of going with a whole steampunk thing with airships. I mean, I mean, obviously that's that's the thing about the game that, that that grabbed me anyway. When when I was asked if I wanted to do a review of it, was it was like, oh, you know, airships, you know, zeppelins, dirigibles, blimps, you know, stuff like that. And I remember thinking, you know, those things are so cool. You know, I mean, who hasn't like, I mean, 
kind of thought, you know, whatever happened to, to Zeppelins and, and Dridgibles? And I know Hindenburg and all that stuff, and I'm sure somebody will pop in with a comment and, and they'll tell me, oh, well, it turned out they weren't economically feasible to carry transport. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, cool, fine, but, you know, there would be something so cool about the possibility of, like, you know, actually taking a, uh, a Zeppelin or something across the ocean like they used to uh, back in the day. And, um, you know, and, and maybe this is kind of like a thing where we'll see more steampunk games come out. I mean, I, I'm not really familiar with the genre, if you will, um, other than seeing, uh, I've seen a few LARP groups that are dressed up like it, and uh, they're impressed with costumes. And I read a book, um, Bone Shaker, uh, a couple of years ago, somebody suggested to me, and that, was, that wasn't a very good book at all, actually. So... Um, but I'm totally digressing at this point. I, I, I dig the theme. I, I dig the gameplay. Um, I, and I, I really enjoy um, the, 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 the mental, mental determination of, of, of what your turn is going to be focused on and what you're going to do each turn. And I, I really, really like that. It really appeals to that gamer, gamer's game mentality or, uh, that, that, I, that I have. And, uh, you know, and I hope if you've got that mentality, too, uh, you will feel the same way. So, um, all right. Well, thank you very much for watching this review. And um, thank you, uh, as always, uh, for your patience uh, with me uh, coming out with these videos as well. Because of the fact that, uh, um, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I'm still getting into the swing of things. You know, actually, my son's taking a nap right now. And that's why I had a chance to uh, do some of this filming. So... Uh, well, until next time, uh, this is Undead Viking. Uh, thank you very much for coming up close to number 100 of this, and that is Arkham Horror. So we just got a few more to go, so uh, please bear with me. I know a lot of you have been waiting for that one. I do have something special planned for that. Uh, anyway, uh, until next time, see you there.